Hi folks, Astronomy Live. On March 2nd, at about 7 hours universal time, there's going to be a partial eclipse of the Sun as seen from SDO, according to my SDO prediction and annotation software, which I run on the annotated SDO YouTube channel. If you go to this channel, you'll find two playlists available. One shows predictions of upcoming transits of the Sun, the other is a playlist of daily annotated videos, which have these circles and lines as overlays on top of daily time-lapse videos taken from the SDO AIA-171 images. So according to my software, on March 2nd, Earth's atmosphere will graze the Sun and cause a partial eclipse. Our atmosphere is extremely opaque to the extreme UV wavelengths that SDO observes in, and as a result, even the atmosphere can appear completely dark and opaque to that light. But if you look at the predictions of upcoming eclipses for SDO on the official SDO blogspot page, you'll find that according to this blog, the SDO eclipse season is predicted to end tomorrow, March 1st, at about 7.13 Universal Time. If you go to my prediction for that time, 7.13 Universal Time, on the annotated SDO uh, webpage, even using my own orbital data, you can see that at that time this purple line forms a tangent with the Sun. This purple line represents Earth's limb, the physical surface of Earth. That is when the physical surface of Earth will leave the Sun and stop blocking it. But the atmosphere will continue to block it for a period of time thereafter. That is denoted by the green line. This shows Earth's atmosphere at 200 kilometers above the surface. So I don't think it's a coincidence that the purple line is forming a tangent with the Sun at exactly the time that the SDO is Go blog page shows the SDO eclipse season ending. This tells me that they've generated these predictions based on Earth's surface. They haven't accounted for Earth's atmosphere. And you have to account for that if you want to truly see exactly how long these eclipses will last and whether or not you'll get any eclipsing of the Sun. Because on the next day, March 2nd, even my own orbit shows the green line representing 200 kilometers above Earth's surface starting to block the Sun and that will result in an eclipse. So, for example, if you go to the annotated SDO YouTube channel, you'll see the latest videos, including some annotations of uh, the, current, the current day's images. And if we view this, and let's see here, let's skip ahead to about the time the eclipse was occurring. Now here I'm going to go frame by frame because this does go by very quickly. But here at 642 Universal Time, you start to see the encroachment of something big and dark passing over the sun. By the next frame, a few minutes later at 645 Universal Time, you can see it's covered up more than half of the sun, right where the, the green line shows uh, tr crossing across the sun. You can see that's where you can no longer see the sun at all. The atmosphere is completely opaque up to about that altitude. As we go forward to the other side of the eclipse, you can see it exiting the sun now and taking uh, the predicted angle across the sun. And again, just below that green line, that's where the sun is basically completely blocked out by the atmosphere. So these daily annotation videos are based on the orbital elements of the SDO spacecraft. It doesn't take into account what it's seeing in the images. It doesn't even look at them. It simply overlays where it predicts the Earth to be relative to the Sun and the Moon as well. There's going to be an interesting eclipse coming up in a few days on March 6th. You can see that on uh, this channel as well, but what I really want to focus on is this transit coming up on March 2nd. Now at this time, at the very time this is happening, I'm going to be preparing to track the uh, SpaceX launch. In fact, at 6.56 Universal Time, we will be less than an hour from the launch of SpaceX DM-1. And thanks to donations from the community, myself and Red's Rhetoric will be there at the Feel the Heat event at the Saturn V Center getting ready to track this launch. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to view these images live as they come in. I would like to, but it simply won't be logistically possible. 
Nevertheless, my bot will continue to download the images and annotate them and upload the results uh, to YouTube. Now, because this transit of the sun is just a grazing of Earth's atmosphere, it doesn't last that long. If you look at the start time, 6.56 universal time, the end time is just a few minutes later. In fact, the way I, I generate these predictions, every second of time in the video corresponds uh, to one minute of time in real time. So the whole process takes about nine minutes. As you can see, the video is about nine seconds long. So there, at about uh, 7.05 universal time, is when the transit will end. Now, if you look at the image cadence, how frequently we get an image from the SDO spacecraft in the real-time images that the, that the bot runs on, uh, it turns out that the image cadence is about every three minutes or so. As you can see, if I go frame by frame, you can see that it's about three to four minutes apart. Uh, and so at best, you're going to get two, maybe three images of this transit. It's going to be a very, very brief event. So you will have to basically go frame by frame to see it happen at all. And you could see some degree of darkening of the sun even beyond the green line, but it will tend to be completely opaque uh, just beneath that green line. Uh, so if you want to go frame by frame on the annotated video, which, by the way, these annotations are uploaded 5 p.m. Eastern time every day, or uh, that's about 10 p.m. or 22 hours universal time. So if you want to go frame by frame in YouTube, all you have to do, you can just pause the video and use the period and comma keys uh, to go frame by frame, which is basically what you're going to have to do, because if you blink, you will miss it. It will be very quick. So as, as you can see, going frame by frame, you can see that transit starting to encroach on the sun exactly as predicted. So this prediction here uh, is based on the official orbit, and I generated this just earlier tonight. Now, it does not include uh, an update to the orbit after the station keeping maneuver, unfortunately. So this station keeping maneuver was originally planned for a little over a week ago on February 20th, but it got delayed. And according to the latest blog post, it was scheduled to take place on uh, February 27th, uh, at about 5.25 Eastern Time. So unfortunately, uh, as far as I can tell, the latest orbital information is from February 27th, but it predates that station keeping maneuver. So they perform occasional small maneuvers to keep the spacecraft in its orbital slot. And unfortunately, the orbit uh, that was used to generate this prediction does not include that perturbation. It doesn't include the effect of that station keeping maneuver, which could throw it off a little bit. But we're now so close to this transit occurring that I doubt it will have that much of an effect. So most likely it will take place as shown here. But when the annotation is performed, uh, if you look at the uh, grayscale images like this, this annotation is performed using the official orbit, which is going to be the most accurate. The color image annotation that you can see here covers the same, basically the same time frame. Actually, it covers a 48-hour period instead of a 24-hour uh, period retroactively. Uh, but it covers images that are basically at the same cadence. Uh, it, it's unfortunately output at a lower resolution, uh, but it is based on the orbit um, that I actually generated from my own observations of the SDO spacecraft with my telescope. So it's not quite as accurate in the positioning of the lines. If you look here, you can see here the completely opaque region is not perfectly lined up with the green line. It's pretty close, but it's not perfect. And if you look at my prediction for um, the eclipse on the second, the timing is off from the official orbit by about 30 seconds or so. It's not a huge difference, but just throwing that out there. Um, obviously, I'm not going to have time between now and then to update my own determ orbit determination with uh, fresh observations of the spacecraft. Unfortunately, I just don't have time uh, because tomorrow night I'm basically heading straight out to Cape Canaveral uh, to get ready for the launch, so there's just not time. Right now, I'm in the process of actually getting all of my equipment together and preparing it to film the launch, so uh, there won't be time for me to update my orbit, and unfortunately, there won't be time for me to generate another prediction 
tomorrow. I could do that though. I could actually set the bot up to automatically generate a prediction tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and I might do that here. So keep watch on annotated SDO uh, to see if another transit prediction shows up. Uh, just in case that there's uh, a big difference between the current prediction and a prediction that includes the changes that they made to the orbit uh, earlier on the 27th. But aside from that, it appears that the SDO's GO site uh, generates predictions that don't account for the Earth's atmosphere. And again, this is uh, shown by the timing of when they show the eclipse season ending on March the 1st at 7.13 universal time, which lines up perfectly even with my own orbit determination of when Earth's surface will leave the Sun for the final time for this eclipse season. But the next day, March 2nd, Earth's atmosphere will graze the Sun and this will cause an apparent eclipse or partial eclipse of the Sun as it's partially blacked out by Earth's atmosphere. So I wanted to get this prediction out there just in case somebody happens to see this discrepancy. This is the reason for it. Thanks for watching, and clear skies, folks.